Hi everyone, I'm Steven Stoneberg from Bittrex Global and the host of this video AMA. We're joined today by Dr. Julian Hosp from DeFi Chain to answer your questions about DeFi Chain and the DFI token. We received a lot of great questions from the community, so let's jump on in. So first of all, Julian, thank you today for joining us from Singapore. So why don't you introduce yourself to the audience and tell us how you got into this crazy world of crypto? <laughs> sure. Hey, Stephen. Pleasure. Uh, hey, everyone. So my name is Julian. I'm originally from Austria in Europe. I My background is actually I'm a medical doctor. I studied medicine and uh, I when I worked, I got really frustrated with the with the medical space and I felt that I wanted to become an entrepreneur in the medical space. And so I, in 2012, I tried to find many, many different ways how I could uh, innovate. I didn't find anything. And in 2014, I stumbled across this crazy world of storing data called a blockchain. And I wanted to do anything in, in the medical field to store patient data. And uh, I realized this was really, really early and it was very, very difficult. And well, what really worked well was the financial space, which is cryptocurrencies. And so, yeah, in 2014, I bought my very first Bitcoins. Uh, was uh, was horrible, a horrible timing. I immediately lost quite a lot of money uh, because back then Bitcoin was just dropping like crazy. And uh, But then I got into the space. I learned everything there was. In 2016, I moved here to Singapore. And uh, yeah, last year in uh, 2019, we uh, started the uh, DeFi chain and uh, the chain uh, went live uh, this May, actually on Bitcoin halving day, May 11th. So now we are uh, close to a six months anniversary. So it's been a, a really crazy ride over the past uh, yeah six years in this space. Okay, and I hope you held on to those Bitcoins. I mean, they're, they're almost at 13,000 again today. So it's crazy. It's a crazy pump today, yeah. <clears throat> Well, why do you think the market's going nuts today? I think it was just overdue. I don't think it has anything to do with today. It could have happened any day, and now it's just people asking why today. I think it had nothing special. I think it was just because it was overdue. Okay, right. So, so a lot of our community members um, want to know what's the story behind DeFi Chain. You know, how did it come about? What are the project's goals? So, I think um, myself and um, uh, my uh, co-founder, uh, Yuzin, who is really the technical genius behind uh, DeFi Chain, uh, I really would love to say that we were really early in understanding that uh, DeFi or the, like, the additional ideas that DeFi can bring to blockchain. Because for us, actually, Bitcoin is the very first DeFi service in a sense of creating true money, creating money and actually being able to transfer that money. But to kind of add on top of that, we, for us, this was almost two years ago that, that we saw, hey, this, there, w there will be additional layers and it will be very, very powerful, especially the decentralized lending side, the decentralized exchange side, decentralized tokenization side, um, the, the decentralized betting side where insurances come in. So for us, this was really, really clear. Um, and uh, yeah, we believe that it would actually need a blockchain that has the similar basic principles as Bitcoin, um, that it's non-Turing complete. This is a, a very important differentiation for us to pretty much most of the other blockchains that have DeFi. For us, security is very, very important. Uh, reliability is very important. And uh, yeah, that's how basically then we analyzed which other blockchain could we actually build a project on top. Um, and then we felt, well, Ethereum, it, great. It's a, it's a great tool to experiment, but definitely not secure, uh, a lot, a lot of problems, scalability issues. And uh, yeah, and you looked at all these blockchains and at the end we realized the best thing to do is to build actually on top of Bitcoin, uh, fork the code, um, add additional upcodes and uh, yeah, provide uh, DeFi usability um, basically with the Bitcoin ecosystem. And in terms of the, the company, um, some of the community members wanted to know about the structure of your company. Is it decentralized open source protocol? where everyone can contribute, and if it's so, how's the governance handled? And then I'm going to ask you about sort of DeFi in general, but why don't you first respond to that question? Yeah, so at the moment, um, DeFi chain is a foundation here in Singapore. Um, it, uh, it, there is no shareholders. Um, it has a board. Um, yeah, but uh, to be honest, it's, there, there's no decisions or there's, uh, we, all, we, we needed that, for example, when we work with Bitrex. 
um, Bitrex wants to have a counterparty that it interacts with. And so we have this foundation that in, it interacts, but it doesn't actually do anything else. Um, at the moment, um, the foundation holds 49% uh, of all the initial coins and uh, everything else was uh, given to the community. There was no ICO done. Um, since it's a proof of stake blockchain, it was not possible to just start from zero coins. Um, this doesn't work in a proof of stake blockchain. You need to create a certain amount. And uh, yeah, the coins were created, 49% were kept uh, by the foundation. They are sitting on a single address. This address is completely public. It can be traced. So um, no coins have been, have been or actually coins have moved because we have done uh, airdrops for Bitcoin holders um, completely free. And so, but this is completely traceable. Um, yeah, it's, com it's completely community developed. Um, everything is open source. You can go to our GitHub and uh, yeah, would, love to have contributions and uh, and support um how we envision this so over the next months and years we would actually love to close down the foundation to actually completely remove it and then make everything be controlled by the master nodes so to have full governance by the master nodes um yeah we would do this as soon as uh, we don't need to have this legal uh, entity that uh, corresponds with uh with uh, exchanges for example or with other platforms but I understand, especially right now, when the blockchain is only six months old, um, yeah, uh, exchanges, for example, or listing sites, they always want to have a, a legal counterparty. But then um, the larger you get or yeah, the, the, the more popular and the, the more community you have, um, this becomes secondary. And then uh, yeah, you don't need to have this, uh, this legal uh, representation anymore. And that's the vision. We're going this direction. Um, it's uh, DeFi chain is completely decentralized. There's no single party that actually has uh, any any way to control anything. DeFi chain, for example, itself is not staking its coins, so there's no voting rights. They are yeah, um, it's as decentralized, in my opinion, as it can get. So that's very interesting. So how ironic is that? So that so the, the crypto exchanges are now like the old school centralized world, and you have to set up a foundation so that you can. Do business with us, like we're the, the, which is ironic. But then, so I guess then over time you want to evolve to a different, like more decentralized governance model. But that's an interesting, just kind of high level question, more about just DeFi generically, not specifically to DeFi chain. So you have you want to go to this decentralized model, but then how does that work with like regulation? You know, the old world operates in a certain way, and financial services, including crypto, are still regulated. So how do you see? getting away from or who does the regulator go after if there's a problem like how how is there accountability i think i mean that's a really fantastic question um i guess i would i would have to say we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there um the ideal world would be that uh, just like today in bitcoin um there's no one that you can go after sure you can come to julian and say julian um didn't you start this uh, together with using three years ago and then i can say sure i did but uh I'm no better or more or worse or, or more important than any, anyone else there. So just because I live in a certain country um, doesn't mean that uh, this jurisdiction uh, is what uh, DeFi chain falls under. I guess this is going to be a very, very interesting question for lawyers, for um, compliance experts. How, would, how will truly decentralized projects uh, be governed when it comes to decentralized exchanging, decentralized lending? I'm definitely no legal or compliance expert, but I think that's going to be yeah, a very interesting thing to approach. Um, for us, the vision is definitely to, to make this project that decentralized that actually for any regulator, it's going to be impossible to say, oh, um, this, is, this falls under European jurisdiction or this falls under Singaporean jurisdiction. It should actually be, yeah, just like Bitcoin today, uh, it falls under no jurisdiction. And that's how DeFi chain is so set up right that, now and hopefully it goes this direction. It's the uses of Bitcoin, though. So it's like you say, there's no bad guns, there's bad people. So, you know, if you, a gun is fine, but if you, obviously, you murder somebody with a gun, then that's, it. but it's the use of these things. And just, just because you have these decentralized chains doesn't mean that there'll, there'll be people who abuse them. Perhaps they'll go after sure. the abusers. So I think that's, I mean, that, that's it's helpful. A, Thank you. Stephen, I think it's a really great question. I, I don't have the perfect answer for you right now. I think actually most DeFi protocols, um, I think a lot of DEXs, um, that's going to be an interesting one. I really think over the next 12 months, I mean, we briefly talked about it in the intro. Um, yeah, it's going to be very yeah, interesting. Right 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 right. Like, you know, and I think like, unfortunately for BitMEX, they might've had a different approach and 
you know, yeah. you might think you're doing it right, and a regulator might not agree with you. And it, it you know, it will, hopefully I that. Totally that's agree. I don't think that's totally the, where DeFi is going, though. I mean, let's not let's not um, yeah go there. So I think just which raises them, you know, sort of ties in next to our next question. You know, what what makes DeFi chain an interesting option for developers over other DeFi blockchains? Assuming we're happy with DeFi, like what? Why is yeah. your token special? Um, I guess a couple of things. So first of all, there's a very interesting uh, analysis, actually written a long format blog post on Hacker Noon that uh, analyzes if smart contracts on Ethereum today would have to be Turing complete. And it comes to the conclusion that pretty much no smart contract as of today would actually have to be Turing complete. So this Turing completeness just adds a lot of extra complexity, adds uh, a lot of uncertainties, um, a lot of the problems, but actually doesn't have much of the upside. So what it really would need, it would just need those opcodes that you can execute the same steps without all the extra possibilities, all the extra risks. And so the interesting thing for engineers, I guess, at the DeFi chain is to come in, work in the same ecosystem, basically, that Bitcoin is in, because we are a code, uh, the, the code was forked, so it's in C++. Um, I think it's very, very exciting from a, from a basic kind of uh, engineering standpoint. And then really focus on one of the core engineering principles, how can you keep things very, very, very simple? Because you can't be very complex. You have to be very simple because that way you have this reliability. And, uh, well, we have quite a good engineering team already. We have some people who contribute uh, on a voluntary basis. We have, uh, yeah, and, and the feedback we get is that this is what makes it that exciting. It's, yeah, you can test a lot of things in the, in the Turing Complete world, but then it comes down to, okay, so let's, let, let's make this really, really good. And I think for engineers, this is uh, a fantastic uh, way to actually, well, execute and, uh, and deliver. I agree with that. And within which industries and user groups are you mainly targeting with this tech in your chain? Um, I mean, the user group is obviously um, DeFi chain is definitely some, uh, some of the crypto geeks, um, people who really, uh, well, fancy Bitcoin. I mean, a, a lot of it is built around Bitcoin. There will be interoperabilities to uh, other blockchains, especially obviously Ethereum, because that's where most of the uh, DeFi is happening right now. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and then obviously um, with the use cases that are coming up right now, liquidity mining is uh, starting on DeFi chain. So obviously a lot of the yield farming is uh, gonna happen. Um, so that's kind of the user group. So I think that the native use case on DeFi chain is definitely not something that, uh, well, the average person that prefers being on an exchange prefers to have a, um, a login and a password. Um, that they, they, that's, that's not going to be the main target for, for DeFi chain. Now, there will be services out there for sure that will offer, uh, just like exchanges do, they will offer uh, a plug and play solution where, where then people can also use this. But the, the native use case on DeFi chain is uh, you control your private key, you control your coins, you can control your destiny in there. Um, so that's going to be the, the main target audience. Which, and you touched on, which is another leads right into the next question. You know, why did you choose to use the Bitcoin blockchain instead of Ethereum, like most of the other DeFi protocols? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of answered this a bit before. So let me just kind of briefly circle in for us. It was really about non-Turing completeness. Um, I see more and more blockchain at the moment trying to go a bit this route, um, realizing that maybe the Turing completeness was a nice idea, uh, but it added a lot, a lot of problems, a lot, a lot of complexity. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing, obviously, um, DeFi on Ethereum is very, very strong. DeFi on Bitcoin, um, yes, you have those wrapped tokens on the Ethereum ecosystem, but this is not really um, yeah, how DeFi is kind of envisioned. Um, so yeah, so for us, this, uh, what, what made it, uh, um, uh, yeah, what, what made it a very interesting, uh, use case to bring basically DeFi into the Bitcoin ecosystem. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think it's, it's a pretty interesting approach. Also, you know, security and transparency are essential elements for DeFi's long-term growth. You know, how is the security system of DeFi chain built? You know, how can you prove the, the transparency of DeFi chain? 
Yeah, so transparency for us, I mean, everything is as transparent, I think, as it gets. We do, we publish on a quarterly basis. We actually publish all the, the stuff we worked on as a summary over the past quarter um, on top of that people could see on GitHub what's happening. Um, all the code is open source. Um, and then additionally, we uh, do uh, every two months, we have actually a security audit into the in the blockchain. Um, we have just actually released or I think so just today we actually got the final result we got five out of five possible stars for the liquidity mining and and for all this um, i'm not sure if the team has released it today to the public but we got it um if they haven't released it today it's gonna come out tomorrow and then every two months um we actually do this whenever we add additional code uh, um that this is checked the the main difference and this is i think has to be really really clear is that in pretty much all the other blockchains, DeFi actually happens in the smart contracts in a sense that it doesn't happen natively on the chain. It, it, it happens in, in, in tokens, in, in other projects. On DeFi chain, everything happens on the main chain, which means that any additional value that happens brings a lot of value to the blockchain. But then obviously also this means we need to run security audits to make sure that all these things work in a way of how they intended to work, to work. And this is really, really important. But then we have those guarantees that this is how the code is supposed to work. Um, there is no alternative because, yeah, um, the guarantees are that much higher on a non turing complete blockchain. Okay, no, that's great. And then let's touch a bit on accessibility. So, you know, I think a really important element when you're building financial instruments using any chain, having accessibility and no technical barriers. How have you tried to break down the technical barriers to people trying to use uh, DeFi? Yeah, chains? I mean, two or let's say three ways. Um, the very first one is obviously we're working with really great exchanges like Bitrex. So obviously for anyone in the community that wants to get in touch, um, gets a uh, hold of the coin, buys, uh, wants to participate in DFI, um, they can do this. Um, I think there is no excuse. Uh, I mean, Bitrex is one of the largest exchanges in the world. So um, it's, it's very easy for anyone in the community to participate um, with the coin. Uh, the next thing is if uh, you don't, let's say you buy the coin on a, a Bitrex, but then you're like, you know what, I, 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 I live with this credo, uh, not your keys, not your coins. So I want to actually control my private key. Great. You can go to DeFiChain.com, download our wallet. Um, it uh, is a fork um, of, uh, uh, of, of, the, of the Bitcoin wallet. So yeah, you download that and uh, well, you control your private key on there. Um, it's a super easy to use wallet. Um, it, uh, yeah, it, it allows you to stake if you, if you want to, it allows you to create a master node if you have enough coins. So it, it allows everything. And then additionally, in the next update, you're going to be able to do decentralized exchanging on there. Um, you, uh, you can do the liquidity mining on there. So, I mean, that's really, really easy to do. I have seen the, the alpha versions of it. It was very, very nice. We're going to, um, I don't know the exact date when we're putting out the better version to the public but uh, it shouldn't be out too long. And I think that's, I mean, very, very easy to use. And then the third side obviously is the engineering side. Here we have great documentation on GitHub. Um, you can contribute C++ is one of the most uh, popular uh, engineering or uh, computer, language, uh, computer languages. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's uh, as easy as it gets. We have uh, some really good uh, Telegram groups where you can exchange ideas, ask questions. Um, our community team is very, very uh, active on social media. So I think that's uh, really, really good. Great. And then you know, following up from there, uh, you know, one of the problems with decentralized finance, there, there's no simple and easy to use solution, right? Which, so that's in itself a barrier to mass adoption. You know, so again, DeFi, there's a lot of buzz about it, but it's still not what I would call mass use, mass accepted. Now, how is DeFi chain looking to solve well, are you looking to solve this problem? And if you are, how are you doing it? I mean, we are in a sense, I mean, there's certain things you can't solve at the moment when it comes to truly decentralized applications. And that is at the moment, we have this primitive way to interact with computers. That is, I have to remember a very, very long random number. And that is my identification and that's my private key. So 
we don't have a better solution about uh, for this at the moment until I don't know Elon Musk comes up with a better way with Neuralink, and then we can I don't know connect with our thoughts to a machine. But until that point, we need to memorize private keys. We need to memorize seeds, and and that is not going away. And also, DeFi chain cannot avoid that problem. This is not going to go away. So on the on the DeFi chain wallet, you will have or you have a private key and. Uh, if you forget that private key, that's just like with anything else, you're going to struggle. Um, we are working on integration with Ledger right now. So, I mean, that should uh, make this way easier. Um, uh, there are things being done there, but I mean, this core problem is not going to go away. What does go away on DeFi with DeFi chain is that it doesn't have all those smart contract risks. It doesn't have all those uncertainties that are typically associated when you think of the Ethereum DeFi space, where you have all those dozens of rug pulls and you don't know if this project is actually legit and you have 600,000 different options and it completely confuses you. You have to see this like on, uh, with Bitcoin. In Bitcoin, you have very few options, but because you have that few options of things that you can do, also very few things can go wrong. And uh, that's what, in our opinion, makes DeFi chain so much more user-friendly compared to many, many other options out there. Great. And, and what do you think is the best, next big milestone for DeFi? Like, what does DeFi 2.0 look like to you? Yeah, so we are uh, bringing out the next uh, hard fork called uh, Bayfront. Um, so we, um, we named those hard forks uh, for at uh, MRT stations in Singapore. So we just go from A to Z and we name those hard forks uh, after those uh, MRT stations. And because Bayfront is such an important hard fork, uh, we named it after a very important MRT station, um, uh, Bayfront, which is yeah, a, very, a very famous uh, landmark here with the sands, uh, the, the very famous ship uh, hotel here in, uh, in Singapore. And I think that's a really important milestone because it introduces liquidity mining um, to DeFi chain and it will be the, the very first uh, kind of use case that is like heads on competing with Ethereum. So that's gonna be a very exciting one. Uh, the hard fork is happening in about two weeks on November 2nd, um, um, more or less if the block time stays uh, the same, but uh, yeah, we assume it does. So yeah, I think that's gonna be massive. It's going to be massive because it allows you to liquidity mine with uh, Bitcoin. And that's going to be, uh, in our opinion, very, very exciting. Um, yeah. And then from there, obviously, uh, the decentralized lending is going to get uh, uh, yeah, uh, very important. And then another thing that's going to happen more in 2021 is the interoperability to other blockchains. Um, so that's going to be quite interesting as well to, to move liquidity uh, way more seamless, let's say, from Ethereum into DeFi chain. So that's going to be quite interesting. The long-term vision there is for DeFi chain to become way more of a DeFi aggregator and uh, have access to so many other uh, DeFi pools and liquidity pools on other chains. So um, that's, uh, that, that's something that's really exciting. But in the next two weeks, we expect uh, quite a big uh, yeah, a boom happening. And I, I, I totally agree with you on all of that. And I think, you know, you've touched on it a bit, but, you know, what are the main sort of milestones that you've achieved with DeFi chain specifically within the space that you're most happy with? And, you know, where do you see the next big steps for you going forward? Yeah, as a, as, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of small things. And I know um, uh, when the team is listening and, uh, and a lot of the engineers, a lot of the contributors are listening, they're like, oh, you didn't mention this. I, I, I know um, there's a lot, a lot of small things happening that add up to be quite uh, big and important. But I guess the really big things. Uh, next one is liquidity mining. Then it's uh, um, all the decentralized lending. Then it's interoperability to other chains. And then the thing that I'm most excited about is going to be this entire decentralized tokenization part. And uh, basically, this, allow, this will allow you on, on uh, DeFi chain to, for example, create shares, create ETFs, uh, create real estate, create gold. Um, yeah, but in a decentralized manner. So it is, the way this works is not by centralized tokenization, which means you need to have the underlying asset, but by uh, so similar how the maker model works on Ethereum. But uh, this works for dollars, but in that way, you can create anything. And so you can create uh, yeah, uh, Apple, an Apple stock, and it's uh, completely decentralized. So anyone can create an Apple stock completely decentralized. Anyone can buy this Apple stock, 
and uh, yeah, it's pegged to the Apple price. So um, and it's uh, it, it's backed by assets. So but but decentralized. So that's twenty twenty one. That is also going to be something that's going to be quite revolutionary, in my opinion. Great. And I guess you've already sort of you touched on my last question, which is going to be you know, wrapping things up. You know, what does the, the future hold for, <laughs> for DeFi, Jane? You've already touched on that. But I think why don't you talk about, you know, post like COVID will end. We'll get to leave our houses again. You know, the, the whole world's going to look very different. You know, where do you really see this going in like, you know, in five years, which is like 100 in crypto? But where do you maybe two? Where do you see yourself yeah, in two I years from now? Yeah, I think the two things that in 2021 will start, and I think it's going to be very crazy to envision how this is going to look. Um, but the two things are interoperability to the other chains and uh, the decentralized tokenization. And if you add those things together, suddenly you you can have a lot of these interoperability things. You're going to remove a lot of friction. If you think about uh, a lot of tokenization today, centralized tokenization, doesn't really solve a an actual problem for the asset but what it solves it so it reduces the friction so it allows for example if you tokenize real estate it allows to switch that tokenized real estate straight into tokenized apple shares but what it doesn't remove it doesn't it, there's still all this regulation there's all this complexity there's a lot a lot of very difficult things that you still need to approach but so now if you start with interoperability, but you have decentralized tokenization. So suddenly um, the Apple stock doesn't have the same regulation as a regular Apple stock. There will still be some for sure. Um, and it's going to be very difficult to foresee how, what this actually looks like. But if you remove that, like this is going to be the massive game changer because then suddenly this makes actually moving financial assets way more liquid. I think over the next four to five years, in my opinion, this can be revolutionizing blockchain in a similar way how maybe so a social media revolutionized the internet and i think that's going to be very very important very exciting to me that's like the dream there becomes uh you don't think in terms of let's say dollars anymore you think in terms of value and uh sure this value will be measured in something but this value will automatically be distributed over various assets various blockchains uh, various networks when you spend something, it just automatically pulls that value. If you uh, earn something, it just automatically distributes that value. So yeah, that's uh, over the next four or five years. That's where I see DeFi chain. And I think that's going to be super crazy, but super exciting. No, I actually agree with that. But I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. The fact that you're creating security tokens and then that's highly regulated. You know, so you, it can be as decentralized as you like. The tech can be as cool as you want it to be. But ultimately, it's going to fall in a bucket of how somebody already looked at this. And that's, you know, who knows how that's going to play out, but it's going to keep the regulators on their toes. So it'll be very definitely. So uh, I think last question for you, you know, how important is your community? How are you growing the community? Like, what are you doing on the community side? I mean, community, in my opinion, is everything. Uh, a blockchain's value only comes from community. It comes from nothing else. You can have the best tech. You can have the, the craziest ideas. If you're the only guy using a coin, it's, it's worthless. So you need to have as many people uh, believing and, uh, and and buying into the vision. And uh, and so for me, community is actually the most important thing in a blockchain. Um, that's what makes the blockchain, to be honest. Um, so it's the number one thing. What do we do? Um, well, I, I'm super active on social media. I'm super active in, in pushing out content. I'm super active in being really close to the community. Um, as I said, we do those uh, quarterly um, reviews and previews. So the next one, for example, is next week on uh, Thursday, pretty much the same time. And then we run through the last three months. We give a bit of a preview on what we expect for the next three months. Um, whenever we make significant decisions that would deviate from what we laid out in the white paper or that we laid out in, in, in any of the plans, we always do so-called uh, DeFi improvement proposals where everyone in the community can vote. And uh, we have had uh, two of those in the last three months. And uh, so, yeah, we have uh, obviously Telegram groups. Uh, we do those AMAs. We do those Q&As. So, yeah, I, and I think th there is almost no better way to to, to, to be even closer um, than what we're doing. We actually were doing our very first uh, virtual meetup, I think, uh, next month. One of our community members setting this up. And uh, we're going to do a virtual meetup. We, we use a separate platform and we do some networking and some exchanging and some talking and some Q&A. So 
yeah, it's gonna be. I mean, it it even during COVID times, uh, we try to be super close, and I I think we managed to do that. Great. Well, hopefully we'll we'll all be out of COVID soon, and we can all grab yeah. a drink <laughs> together. <laughs> so we, we, one can only hope. So you know, again, thank you so much for joining us today, Julian. This is a great video. AMA. I think we've learned a lot about the past, the future of DeFi chain, DeFi in general, sort of what makes your project unique and sort of where it's going. So again, thanks so much for, for sharing your time with us. And we look forward to working with you as this project continues to grow and grow. Me thanks as well. Stephen, thanks so much. Appreciate it.